Hello and welcome to the news at 7 on NT International. I am Comfort Amadu with the news and we begin with the headlines. Federal government sets to introduce COVID-19 vaccines assures Nigerians of safety and efficacy. Nigerian military receives a pat on the back for their commitment towards the protection of the country from internal and external threats. And seashells become first country in Africa to start COVID-19 vaccinations. Our federal government has assured Nigerians that COVID-19 vaccines that will be brought into the country are safe and effective and will be administered to Nigerians for free. The Executive Director, National Primary Health Care Development Agency, Dr. Faisal Shaibu, who said this in Abuja, observed that about 70% of Nigerians are being prioritized for the vaccination in 2021 and 2022 to reduce mortality and interrupt uh, COVID-19 transmission in the country. Details with Ita Basi Ita. Outbreak of COVID-19 in the country in February 2020, the federal government has initiated several strategies to stop the spread of the virus and keep Nigerians safe. But the second wave of the virus is spreading too fast, with an increase in the number of confirmed cases across the country on a daily basis. To further ensure safety of Nigerians from this pandemic is the need to introduce COVID-19 vaccines in the country, just as it is done in other countries. Uh, we have uh, the responsibility uh, to actually uh, convey the right uh, information and create awareness around uh, around the vaccines, around COVID-19. The federal government, mindful of myths and misconceptions surrounding COVID-19 vaccines, set up a technical committee of experts from the health sector to study and scrutinize the type of vaccine that is safe for Nigerians. A lot of work is going on to ensure that this happened, that the vaccines that were coming would be safe and effective. In a virtual meeting with journalists in Abuja, the committee said the federal government has put everything in place to ensure the vaccines are properly preserved within the required temperature and will be monitored and guarded for accountability. The vaccine, which will be administered in four phases based on vaccine type and availability, will give priority to frontline workers across the 36 states and the FCT based on WHO guidelines once the first 100,000 doses of vaccine expected to arrive in the country this January are received. Basi Taipan, NTA News. And the World Health Organization says no fewer than 42 countries are already rolling out the various COVID-19 vaccines which have been cleared for use. 36 are in high-income nations. WHO's Director General Dr. Tedros made this known during the COVID-19 news conference at WHO headquarters in Geneva. He said he also emphasized equitable distribution of the vaccines and observed that there is a clear problem that low and most middle income countries are not receiving the vaccines yet. He further said uh, the vaccinations will save lives, stabilize health systems and will lead to a truly global income recovery that stimulates job creation. And now with me to talk more on the COVID-19 vaccine to be brought into Nigeria is the Director of Disease Control and Immunization, Dr. Basi Okposen. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, Nigerians. All right. You're welcome. Now, uh, first of all, how safe are these vaccines, considering uh, the fact that it took a, a shorter period to produce the vaccine under one year, to be precise, when it took uh, five to ten years to come up with other vaccines like yellow fever and polio? Is the standard uh, not been uh, compromised? Just to reassure Nigerians that the vaccines to be used are very safe and effective. In the 60s, it would take about six months to go by ship to England. Today, in six hours, you are in England. In those days, we would line up around 4 a.m. to speak to somebody in the U.S. The comfort of our bedrooms, we can speak easily. The technologies have advanced. 
Remember, the COVID virus is of the SARS family, and during the flu pandemic, vaccines were developed, and there is some basis. So we are not, the scientists are not starting from zero points, but building on what has been done before. And all the vaccines in use currently have passed the WHO pre-qualification test, and any vaccine to be used in Nigeria will also have to go through NAVDAC before it can be used. All right, there are some myths and uh, misconceptions surrounding the COVID-19 vaccine, especially uh, concerning DNA. How can you convince Nigerians on the safety of these vaccines? Um, like I mentioned earlier, Nigerians, your president loves you, your minister, your executive director, Dr. Faisal, all of us at the agency, our NCDC, NAVDAC, partners, WHO, UNICEF, and the rest in country, they love us all. Those vaccines pass through five basic stages of trials before they are pre-qualified. From the early stage where I have heard some say, oh, they are bringing the vaccine to try in Nigeria. No, the vaccines to be used in Nigeria have already been tried and certified fit for human use. So coming into Nigeria, they are very, very safe for Nigerians to receive. Okay, I understand that the vaccines are meant to save lives, but are there any kind of a side effect to uh, this COVID-19 uh, vaccine? And uh, do people have the choice to either decide to take or refuse to take the vaccine? I would advise Nigerians it's safe to take. You know, it's like we have, if I want to go to Lukoja, there are vehicles that can take us to Lukoja. And somebody decides to say, I want to trip to Lukoja in this age where there are vehicles. For us humans, once infected, we can develop herd immunity. But it will take like 10 years for a community, for a nation to develop herd immunity when nothing is done. The vaccines to be administered to Nigerians will it help fast track uh, the herd immunity that we need to interrupt transmission. So for Nigerians, I would just advise us, uh, the president loves, like I said earlier, the minister, the executive director, the expressor, we want all of us to stay safe and fulfill our dreams. Those vaccines to come in, researches have been done, and we reassure Nigerians they are safe for use. So like you're, you said, saying that also you're, you're, you're actually saying that it's not compulsory? It will not be compulsory, but we are pleading with Nigerians hmm. see it as a safe tool. You said earlier, 42 countries are already taking the vaccines. There are many, so we have not, you see, ordinary paracetamol that people take, there are some people if they take paracetamol, it gives them, instead of even helping their pains, it causes some other reaction. There are people that, the things that are being reported, sometimes the things we say in the social media, it could be a coincidence, but these vaccines have been well researched and they are safe for use before WHO could pre-qualify them for use. Okay, so is the vaccine a lifelong thing or is it just for a period of time? You know, for most of the vaccines that are available currently, remember this is the first time these vaccines are coming out. So there are still researches going on to see the durability of the vaccine. And so, and from um, the information is available, once somebody is vaccinated, it generates the means in the person. And when the person is infected with the coronavirus of any of the strains, because there are already antibodies in the system, it will help the individual to fight the infection and prevent possible mobility and mortality from it. So it's safe that we take the vaccine, develop some antibodies inside us that will be able to fight the infection at any point that the person is infected. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Basi, for shedding more light on the safety of COVID-19 vaccines. Thank you. Thank you, Nigerians. Please, 
stay safe and receive the vaccines when you see them. All right, thank you very much. And World Health Organization says the COVID-19 global pandemic will continue for at least one more year. This is just as seizures become first country in Africa to start COVID-19 vaccinations. Justin Bemunye will give us details of these on Global Update and other stories from the globe. The World Health Organization has forecast that the global coronavirus pandemic is set to last for at least another year and maybe even longer. WHO's David Nabarro indicated that coronavirus cases are surging across several continents and that widespread vaccination is key to overcoming the pandemic. The World Health Organization's special envoy added that world leaders must relentlessly work together to stop the spread of COVID-19 globally. Concerning this, world tally of COVID-19 surpassed the 90 million mark and also registered over more than 1.9 million deaths and around 64.6 million recoveries till 10 January. Out of these numbers, Nigerian authorities say the country has recorded 99,063 cases. In the meantime, the island nation of Seychelles has become the first country in Africa to roll out its COVID-19 vaccination campaign, with the country's political leaders and health workers taking the vaccine on Sunday. President Wavel Ramkalawan, who said he wanted to lead by example by being the first, followed by the vice president with a cabinet of ministers and members of the National Assembly, were the first ones to take the Sinopharm vaccine. Health workers also received the vaccine at the campaign launch at the headquarters of the Ministry of Health at the Seychelles Hospital. The ministry described the vaccination rollout as a crucial step in responding to the pandemic and which adds a layer of protection in addition to wearing masks, physical and social distance and maintaining proper hygiene. Seychelles has 50,000 doses of the vaccine. The entire population of the archipelago island nation is to be vaccinated on a voluntary basis. In other news, government officials from Ethiopia, Egypt and Sudan are once again holding talks in a bid to try to resolve a longer running dispute triggered by the construction of a huge dam on the river Nile. In July last year, the reservoir of the hydroelectric dam in west of uh, Ethiopia started filling with water despite the breakdown of talks between the three countries. The Addis Ababa government is determined to provide electricity for its population and we also export power. But Egypt is concerned that during years of drought, its water supply will be greatly reduced. Sudan has warned Ethiopia not to proceed with the second stage of filling the dam before an agreement is reached. In the meantime, thousands of Israelis have restarted protests against Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, calling on the long seven leader to resign over corruption charges against him and his mishandling of the coronavirus pandemic. Demonstrators were pictured in Jerusalem on Saturday night holding placards calling on Netanyahu to go and let my people go. The protests took place near the Prime Minister's residence as the country continues to vaccinate its population in the middle of its third national pandemic lockdown. Thank you for watching. I'm Justin Abemunyi. And still on the foreign scene, the U.S. is lifting long-standing restrictions on con contacts between American and uh, Taiwanese officials. The Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, says the self-imposed restrictions were introduced decades ago to appease the mainland uh, Chinese government, stressing that the rules are now null and void. This comes as Trump administration enters its final days ahead of the inauguration of Joe Biden as president on 20th of January 2021. And meanwhile, the Biden transition team says the president-elect is committed to maintaining the previous U.S. policy towards Taiwan analysts uh, say the move could be reversed by Pompeo's successor, Anthony Blinken. And back home, the Imo State Governor Hope Uzodima has commended the Niger military for their commitment towards the protection of the country from internal and external threats. He made this known at the interdenominational church service to mark this year's Armed Forces Remembrance Day in Oweri. Bright Egbuchu reports. 
The special church service is held to honor the souls of military personnel who paid the supreme sacrifice in defense of their fatherland. The officiating reverend, Brigadier General Charles Iwebu, in his sermon, admonishes Nigerians to live in peace and harmony as without it, there can be no meaningful growth and development. When you go around our country, you see that we have a power. In the past six states of the federation, we have about 32 states where the military is involved in this campaign of peace and against criminality. And that brings about 89% of coverage of the whole country. Governor Hope Zadimba, who took the second Bible reading, commended the Nigerian armed forces for relentlessly defending the nation, stating that the progress so far recorded in the fight against insurgency in the Northeast is due to their sacrifice. News. And you are watching the news on NT International, reaching you live from Abuja. Welcome back. And the federal government public works project has been flagged off in more states. Mayor Ogidi reports. Labor Minister Chris Ingege, laboring for the good of the youths in Anambra State. It is the flagging off of the special public works program. 1,000 youths from the 21 local government areas equipped with the needed tools to keep public infrastructure and environment clean. We want to use this as a stopgap measure to absorb the teeming army of unemployed youths. Instead of staying at home, doing nothing, at least with this I'll be able to go out, nobody will say I'm gossiping at home. As the senior minister goes to clean the drainages in Anambra State, the junior minister Festus Kiamo goes to farm in Delta, all in demonstration of the public works program. But keeping the women busy to feed the homes occupies the minister's heart. I always beg my state selection people, I always beg the state directors of anything. Please, give women more slots, I will beg now. The women will manage this money more than the men. Properly kitted against COVID-19, 27,000 beneficiaries of the program welcomed the Minister of Water Resources, Suleiman Adamu, to commence the exercise in Jigawa State. The emergence of the novel COVID-19 pandemic is President and Commander-in-Chief Sustainability Committee under the chairmanship of the Vice President of the of Simbajo to craft economic measures to cushion the adverse socioeconomic effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. The unprecedented social intervention programs in this country is it's so remarkable, so big that we have not seen the time. In Kuala State, with about one billion naira set for the program, the selection process was reportedly all-encompassing because women, youths, and the physically challenged made the list. More because with the little I'm going to earn, I will add it to my business. In Ibadan, a representative of the Minister of Youth and Sports Development, Sunday Dare, symbolically flagged off the youth-friendly program with words of excitement and determination in excess. The federal government special public works program as its presence in all the 774 local government areas across the country and will last for three months. Mie Ogidi, NTNews. And as part of uh, complementing government's effort at ensuring inmates get improved welfare, a non-governmental organization under the auspices of Blessed Hope Foundation has donated relief materials worth several millions of naira, the Nigerian Correctional Service Facility in Suleja. 
the relief items which comprises of food and toiletries according to the organization is to give hope to the hopeless as well as express love and care for the downtrodden coordinator of the foundation titilayo ebo says aside the donation they also render pro bono services as well as pay fines for inmates who cannot afford it You are not yet a blessing if you cannot if you cannot bless people. You can't call yourself a blessing, and it doesn't mean that you should have billions before you are able to do that. Even you can give your last to give hope to the hopeless. So we render pro bono services. We pay fines for people that doesn't have. Applauding the gesture from the organization, Assistant Controller General of the Correction Service, Suleja Custodian Center, Abdurrahman Musa, assured that they will make judicious use of the items. We used to do, to invite some of the cells provost so that we can share this thing according to cells. We will count each cell and give the items equally to the number of the images that are inside because is being brought for their use. So we have to serve them first. The foundation was established in 2007. And in compliance with the directives of federal government on the harmonization of citizens' data, which the Federal Road Safety Corps has since commenced with the introduction of compulsory provision of the national identification number named by applicants of the national driver's license, the Corps Marshal FRSC Dr. Bogoye Oyemi has also made provision of name mandatory for all categories of vehicle registration effective from second quarter of 2021 and this is in total compliance with the presidential directives all applicants of vehicle registration are therefore expected to present their national identification number as a precondition for the registration of their vehicles adding that there would be no waiver for anyone irrespective of their status in the society In goods and property was billions of naira were consumed by fire Sunday morning at popular Kubo furniture market along Yanya Abuja Road. Abdullahi Ajia reports that the combined efforts of the firefighters spent several hours to contain the devastating fire. Kubo remains one of the popular furniture markets in the nation's capital Abuja, flourishing in this business for many decades. Sunday morning fire at the market, whose cause is yet to be ascertained, is one of the disaster that has left deep traders and businessmen in shock as they are still counting their losses with nothing to salvage. I saw one man, he wanted to come jump into the fire. I was just, I didn't know what to do. I'm pleading to the federal government, please, come and help our people, please. Many of them, their money is gone, their source of livelihood is gone. The fire was too much. One of my warehouses, we offloaded there, it's not quite long. We offloaded there, 40 feet worth of more than 40 something million. Everything burned down. If government can provide us fire service station and give us government security, all this will come to control because people here, sometimes when marketers are gone, the enemy will come and put the fire. I just run machines, all my small machines, all the goods I bought that I will use for this January, all of them got burnt. Inflammables and combustibles at the market we are said to have aggravated the fire that took combined firefighters from NEMA, FEMA, fire service, the military, among others, and the market guards several hours to put off. We started using chemical foam so that we can blanket the fire. And that is the chemical foam we use that make this fire to be up to this very level. But you see there is a pocket of fire. They are still fighting. Our men are still fighting over there. Fire service, well, they try almost... Five of, uh, six of them, we are, we are here. Both uh, six of the truck, we are here. The traders are appealing to governments and corporate organizations to come to their rescue, considering the enormity of the disaster. Abdullah Hajia, NTN News. 
And in Bauchi State, 20 people feared dead in the fatal motor accident along Tarawan Meduguri Road in Bauchi State. The accident involving a Toyota Hummer bus of Bernou Express coming from Joss Plata State and a Gulf 3 wagon said to be coming from Kari in Bauchi State occurred at about 11 a.m. today. Eyewitness account revealed that the accident happened when the driver of the Hummer bus tried to dodge a tricycle and suddenly collided with the Toyota Gulf and incidentally caught fire. Hoodlums numbering over 50 have attacked Unweke police station in Eza South Council area of Eboni State, killing three police men and injuring two others. Police Public Relations Officer Eboni State Command DCP Lovers order confirmed this to our reporter Chinaza John. Which is unprovoked happened when one of the hoodlums came to the division on Friday night with the pretense of laying a complaint, only for others to suddenly open fire on policemen, killing some of them and setting some of the police properties on fire. While they were busy listening to him, his story, what was uh, happening in his house as he claimed that he'd been attacked, um, the two in his back opened fire started shooting at the policemen and um, more than 50 or according to them 70 of them took into the police station it was already an anarchy and three policemen were shot to death by two inspectors and one sergeant DSP Lovett Order further stated that thorough investigation is on to unravel issues surrounding the attack, stressing that normalcy has however returned to the area while some arrests have also been made. The leaders of the area were surprised because there was no, it is not provoked, there was no issue, which means it's not just a, 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 a I don't call it, a, it's, a, it's baseless people, that is, it lumps, criminals that did that investigation is seriously going. The Commissioner of Police have um, also vowed to do everything within his power, I'm talking about within the ambit of the law, to ensure that um, the perpetrators are brought to book. Four vehicles parked at the station, including the DPO's office, were set ablaze by the hoodlums, while two AK-47 rifles were carted away during the incident. In Abakaliki, Chinaza John, NTA News. And that report concludes the news at 7 on NTA International. And before we go, remember to connect with NTA against rape and rapists. I'm Comfort Amadou. Good evening.